Hey guys, today's video is going to be a fairly short one, um, kind of getting into cases here that are a little bit smaller because they haven't been around for as long, so there isn't as many years to accumulate information and evidence, um, or a new lead, or have, you know, that opportunity to get more of that exposure, so most people don't know about it. So, that's why I'm covering cases that are a little more recent lately. And um, today's case actually takes place in 1996, um, but there's just still very little evidence. And this is over... Hey guys, today's video is going to be over the, the disappearance of a 15-year-old girl named Sarah Ann Bushland. She actually lived in Spooner, Wisconsin with her mother and her stepfather and her two stepbrothers. And... As of recently, she had actually been getting in trouble with her parents quite often because she had a diary in which she would release and write down her frustrations and kind of explain that she was confused and a little, um, just didn't really know how to go about her relationships with her mom, her stepdad, or her stepbrothers. And some of the things in the entries that she had wrote down in there had upset her stepfather, um, one of them being that she was dating a 21-year-old at 15. And so they had actually grounded Sarah for a couple weeks and told her that she could only go to school. So she was headed straight to school and headed back home every day for a couple of weeks. And... So the day Sarah went missing was actually the day after her father had taken her diary away. She went to school that day and she was picked up by her boyfriend around lunchtime and she went to his house and they had lunch. And before lunch she actually had plans to go to a party or some kind of school get together and her parents knew that this was fine, i um, pretty sure, because they told she, t she had told all her friends and she knew that she was um, supposed to ride home with a friend and after lunch, when she got back from her boyfriend, something had changed in her mood. She decided that she wasn't going to go home anymore, that she, I'm sorry, that she wasn't going to go to the school outing anymore, and that she wanted to go home because she was afraid of her stepfather finding her diary. She wanted to go home because she was afraid of her stepfather finding her diary because of the newer entries she had made. And this is definitely a weirder scenario because I don't understand why she'd be all of a sudden changing her mood about going home and her stepfather was actually out of town on a business trip and her mom went along with him so neither of the parents were at the house so they weren't even really necessarily expecting her back or home in order to get a hold of her diary so she rode the bus home she actually was trying to get rides from multiple friends and multiple different people she knew but she had zero luck doing so she ended up riding the bus home, and her reason for trying to get a ride was so she would beat her stepfather home. Again, her stepfather wasn't there, so it was weird that that's what she told all of her friends. Um, so she got off the bus around 4, 3 or 4 p.m., um, and there was a darker truck following the bus. Some have said it's gray, some have said it's green, some have said it's dark blue. They don't actually know the color they don't actually know the color of the truck. All they know is that it was a darker color. So Sarah actually walked in, up to her driveway as this truck pulled into her driveway. And she walked over to the passenger side window and began speaking to this person. And then she got into the truck and the truck drove off. And witnesses on the bus, multiple witnesses, said that um, not only did multiple witnesses see her get into this vehicle, but they said that it looked like she knew the person. She didn't look alarmed or frightened. Um, it didn't look like the person had anyone else with them, and no one else could really see the driver of the vehicle. So they didn't really know if it was male or female or someone she knew or didn't know. They truly had no idea other than the fact that she had been willingly walked into this truck and... They didn't really know anything except for what they saw, which was her get into this truck with a vehicle where she looked unalarmed. And this was huge because her stepbrother noticed she wasn't home in about 30 to 40 minutes. He, she call, he called his father, who was, of course, Sarah's stepfather, and he was frustrated, so he called Sarah's mother, and Sarah's mother, because um, I don't think that they were in the same place. I think that 
they were just both out of town at the same time. So Sarah's mother drove home immediately, and she didn't get home until later that night. And Sarah actually had ran away once before. Of course, she had been brought back, or she came back, I'm not sure which, but um, this was like at first thought to be just another runaway because her diary had been taken away, and they didn't think much of it. And it actually was treated as a missing, I'm sorry, it was treated as a runaway case for three years. People at her school didn't even know she was missing. They had absolutely no idea. There was no flyers or, you know, there was no um, plea on the news. They didn't do interviews about their child missing or anything because they thought she willingly left. And if they made those pleas, she might try to run further or something of that. And... In May of 2013, they brought cadaver dogs on the property, and the cadaver dogs actually hit in multiple spots all over the property, but they didn't bring them in until 2013. That's 17 years after she went missing, and they still hit at a bunch of different spots, so some people speculate that there was the possibility that the stepbrother was hired by the stepfather to do something with Sarah, or maybe the stepbrother did something to Sarah. Um, maybe one of the stepbrothers was the one that's in the truck, and um, the one that was inside was the one to call the dad, but it's weird that the stepbrother called his dad to let him know Sarah wasn't home when no one was expecting Sarah home that night because she had plans after school. Um, obviously very weird, I mean, I don't understand. In, in my opinion and my theory, I feel like it probably does have something to do with the stepfather and the stepbrothers. Um, I really couldn't find any information on like home life or how they treated Sarah or anything. I just know Sarah was hanging out with an extremely older crowd. She was into things that um, her parents didn't want her to be in at that age. And her parents actually both passed away in 2017. So this is still an open unsolved case and there's absolutely no evidence and no leads and no one else fighting to find Sarah. Um, like I said, they didn't make it a missing persons case until 1999. So she's technically only been missing for 18 years, but no one has seen her in like 23. And that's just really heartbreaking. And I... It's honestly really frustrating to think that her parents died and it's sad to think that they passed away without, you know, either A, being held responsible or B, having closure on their daughter and it's a, definitely a very odd case. There is a couple of documentaries on it. As always, I urge you guys to go give it a look and do your re own research and kind of just form your own opinion like form your own opinions and speculate and let me know what your theory is in the comments below if maybe there's something that I missed or something that you think could have happened or was more likely and why because I love to kind of conversate about these topics back and forth but I'm gonna go ahead and edit this video so I will see you guys in the next one thank you so much for watching bye